Hello friends, uh, welcome to NPTEL online certification course on solid water conservation engineering. Uh, I am Rajendra Singh, Professor in Agriculture and Food Engineering Department of IIT Kharagpur. And I welcome you to this course and this is week number one, lecture one. So we are starting with introduction. And I will first introduce you to the course outline which we will go through during this course. So in week 1, we will start with introducing uh, soil erosion, we will go into causes and types of soil erosion, we will see what are the erosion agents, what are the factors that affect uh, erosion. Then we will go into the various kinds of uh, erosion and what are the mechanics behind them. And finally, we will talk about agronomical and engineering measures that are used for controlling water erosion. In week 2, we will switch to soil loss estimation and there one of the very popular methods called universal soil loss equation USLE that is what I will begin with. And over the years there has been several modifications made in USLE. So, I will go through also what are the modified forms of universal soil loss equation. Thereafter we will move into estimation of rainfall erosivity, soil erodibility and various other factors that are needed for estimating soil loss using universal soil loss equation. And finally, we will close the week with measurements of uh, soil loss. In week 3 onwards, because in my introduction I told you that basically here we will be talking about various engineering principles involved in designing engineering measures. So, in week 3, we will move into various kinds of engineering measures that are adopted for uh, design of various uh, measures and we will begin with uh, uh, contour and graded burns that is burns which are one of the common engineering measures adopted for controlling erosion we will start with them. Then uh, week 4 we will go to design of terraces another level of uh, uh, engineering measures and we will define level and graded broad based terraces, bench terraces and how they are designed. In week number 5, we will go to design of grass water wage that is basically the channels where grasses are, uh, are planted or vegetation has grown uh, which can be used for carrying the water safely to any outlet. Week number 6, we will go into gully control, we will see the principles behind gully control, then we will see some of the vegetative measures that can be adopted for controlling gully and finally, we will go through the temporary structures and divergent drains which are used for uh, controlling gully. In week number 7 and 8, we will start with basically the permanent gully control structures and we will start with drop spillway design that is we will design how to see how to design drop spillage. So, first we will see the design fundamentals and any permanent gully control structures have three types of design hydrologic, hydraulic and structural. So, we will see how to go for hydraulic, hydraulic, hydrologic and structural design. Week number 9 we will move to next structure that is design of drop inlet spillway and there uh, we will use all the principles which you have adopted uh, that is hydrologic, hydraulic and structural design principles we will adopt for drop inlet spillway again. Week number 10, we will move to another permanent gully control structure that is shoot spillway and again we will see how to design shoot spillway. Week number 11, we will move to the second important wind erosion, uh, erosion agent 
that is wind erosion and we will go through the mechanics of wind erosion then we will see what are the vegetative and mechanical control measures that can be adopted for controlling wind erosion and finally, we will we'll go for designing two major engineering measures that is wind brakes and shelter belts which are used for controlling wind erosion. Week number 12 that is the last week we will go through the land capability classification, the rate of sedimentation, silt monitoring and storage loss in tanks that is basically what are the impacts of soil erosion if you do not control soil erosion what are their impacts. So, basically today in this we will start this course with introduction of the course itself and the course content for this particular week are week number 1 is today that is we will introduce the subject then we will go in lecture number 2 we will see causes and types of soil erosion we will see factors affecting soil erosion and effects of soil erosion in lecture 4 will be on soil erosion mechanics and lecture 5 will be on water erosion control measures so let us start with uh, the course but before we go into the actual content of the course, there are certain things called learning outcomes. Why are we learning this course? What will be the impact once you learn this course? What will be the knowledge gain you get? So, that is through learning outcomes and in educational sector basically we use Bloom's, Bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives which was first given in 1956 and later revised in 2000. 1. And this Bloom's taxonomy was developed by a group of educational experts led by Benjamin Bloom, an American educational psychologist and that is why it is named behind him that is Bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives. And as per this Bloom's taxonomy, there are six levels of cognitive skills starting from low to high and just for your information cognition is the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought experience and senses. That means anything our mind does to any action it takes in order to process knowledge or acquire knowledge uh, by either understanding through, through thought experience or by sensing that is referred to as cognition and this cognitive cognition has six le levels of skills that is that is why there are six levels of cognitive skills starting from low to high and uh, we'll start with the lowest one the lowest level is knowledge and remembering that is our lowest level and i mean that is very common in our life because when we were toddler our parents were always telling us about this is cat, this is dog or they were asking us to repeat 1, 2, 3 or A, B, C and they were all uh, always asking us to recall those. So, that was the process of gaining knowledge or remembering. So, that was that is the lowest level of cognitive skill. Then next level is of course, let me also tell you that the first term here that is knowledge and remembering that is the first term knowledge was given when the Bloom's taxonomy came in 1956 and then uh, later on the second term understanding that was given when Bloom's taxonomy was modified in year 2001. So, there are two terms for each level. So, second level has comprehension and understanding that is once you know something you, you have acquired certain knowledge then you start understanding that that is level number 2. And then the third level is application or applying. So, once you have remembered something or you have acquired knowledge, if you have understood that the next application, next thing will be to apply that knowledge to your area of domain. And then once you have applied, the next level will be analysis or analyzing. That means, after remembering, after understanding of applying, you want to analyze what happened when we applied your particular knowledge to a particular domain area of your interest 
and then finally next next level will come evaluation or evaluating that is once you have applied a particular knowledge once you have uh, you have analyzed then you try to evaluate that what what was the outcome so that is the fifth level and the last level is synthesis or creating that is synthesis or creating that means you acquire knowledge you remember something you comprehend or understand you apply you analyze you evaluate and finally based on whatever you have learned you you create something and that is what uh, that is what your last level that is synthesis or creation is all about and uh, after successful completion of the course will will during the course of uh, during this course will try to apply all these six levels and after successful completion of the course that we expect that students shall be able to understand explain the fundamentals of soil erosion processes and soil conservation measures just i will take you back to previous slide because i wanted to tell you that we have used a color code here that is your first level is black second level is red third level is light green fourth level is blue fifth level is deep green and sixth level the final level synthesis are creating is in yellow color so now when we go back to our uh, learning outcome after the successful completion of the course uh, we start with level number 2 here level number 2 here intentionally i have not kept level number 1 because uh, it is well understood that if you want to study something then obviously you have to remember certain definitions you have to remember certain formulae certain variables what are the common variables used so that is why i have not used the first level but we start with second level that is we have to understand and explain the fundamentals of soil erosion processes and soil conservation measures that you should be able to do the next level is analyze and utilize the available data for designing soil and water conservation structures that is what you are you are expected to do or you should be able to do so if you see here designing here is third level of cognitive skill so you are using that third level to design soil and water conservation structures and once you have designed then you utilize level number 4 that is analyze and utilize the available data which has come out of designing the soil conservation structure then you should also be able to demonstrate and evaluate will evaluate various soil conservation measures that means what that you are now using level number 5 of cognitive skill and finally once you have learned or done all these things then you should be able to develop solutions to the real life soil and water conservation problems so that is the final outcome so you will be able to understand and explain the fundamentals of soil erosion process and soil conservation measures you will be able to analyze and utilize the available data for designing soil and water conservation structures you will be able to demonstrate and evaluate various soil conservation measures and you you would be successful in developing solutions to the real life soil and water conservation problems that is the learning outcome uh, we expect after the successful completion of this particular course now we come to two important factors which are there in our uh, subject name soil and water conservation engineering so what is soil and water we know that soil and water are two basic natural resources that must be conserved and utilized judiciously and that is because for meeting the food fiber and shelter needs of growing population we do need the efficient utilization of these resources and as we know that there is a increase in population not only in india but all over the world that simply means that the various sectors there are various sectors not only the human beings but there are various sectors that are competing for the limited resources limited soil and water resources we have and that is why they are becoming extremely competitive so we have to manage our resources whatever we have in a efficient manner now 
Next is solid water conservation engineering. So, basically this course deals with the engineering principles that are involved in solid water conservation as we have already seen uh, in the um, course uh, outline that we will be using engineering principles involved in solid water conservation and we will try to understand them, try to apply them in designing various conservation structures. And this includes classification of erosion processes that is we will spend some lectures there. Then we will take up agronomical engineering measures adopted for erosion control and we will design burns, terraces and gully control structures that various uh, engineering measures for controlling water erosion and similarly in the case of wind erosion we will see the design of wind breaks and shelter wheels. So, that is what we will do um, in this particular or this course will deal with these possibilities. Then question comes what is soil? Then soil can be simply defined as the upper part of earth crust that is penetrated by plant roots. So, anywhere around you if you see plants growing under natural circumstances then you can automatically say that there will be soil there. So, that is the very simplified definition, but if you look at the soil science society of America has formally defined soil in a more systematic manner and as per them the unconsolidated mineral or organic material on the immediate surface of the earth that serves as a natural medium for the growth of land plants that soil. I mean if you look at the simplified definition and this sophisticated definition the last part if you see here it is a plant roots penetrated by plant roots here it says it serves as a natural medium for growth of land plants. So, that is that part is common here we only call it earth crust here it calls the immediate surface of the earth uh, that is the surface and here we call it crust and of course, it goes little finer in detailing that is it will be unconsolidated mineral or organic material. There is a even more sophisticated def definition given by soil science society of America of the soil and that is more elaborated and that reads that it is the unconsolidated mineral or organic matter on the surface of the earth that has been subjected to and shows effects of genetic and environmental factors of climate including water and temperature effects and macro and microorganisms conditioned by conditioned by relief acting on parent material over a period of time. So, this is a more sophisticated definition where uh, uh, it does talk about the unconsolidated mineral and organic matter on the surface of the earth, but it also shows that genetic and environmental factors that impact our macro and microorganisms that are conditions of relief that act on the parent material for creation of uh, soil over a period of time. Coming to soil, if we consider soil as a system, then basically it is a complex mixture of organic and inorganic components. There are three main components involved in a soil system, minerals from rocks below or nearby and we know that it is the weathering of rocks itself that is responsible for formation of the uh, uh, soil. So, basically the minerals that are there in the rocks uh, that they form one of the main components. Then the other main component is organic matter which is the remains of plants and animals that use the soil. So, if you really see the soil, uh, if you take a soil sample there will be certain remains of uh, dead plant roots uh, or animals and which has been converted into organic matter. And of course, there can be living organisms that reside in the soil. So, I mean these are the three main components minerals, organic matter and living organisms. And obviously, if you take a chunk of soil then obviously, you could find bacteria, you could find fungi, you could find mites, you could find snail, you could find uh, earthworms and so on and so forth. So, that is what com completes the soil system and of course, chemical, physical and biological factors contribute to the development of soil. So, I mean there are this is a long process, a slow long process 
that is responsible for creating soil and that is what is our interest in this particular subject. Then coming to functions of soil, there are several functions of soil and of course, the most important one is it serves as a media for the production of food, fiber, fuel and feed. I mean that the that we have already seen and that is what the plant root that is the basic definition of soil itself contains the plant growth. Then next is it regulates water flow through the terrestrial water cycle. So, when rainfall occurs then obviously, it reaches the soil surface and once it reaches the soil surface the first process that begins is infiltration that is the vertical entry of water into the soil. I am sure that you have read in soil uh, science uh, some at some level of your course. So, infiltration takes place and that infiltration really fills the soil moisture or, or the what is zone or, or the uh, soil moisture let us say and once it is completely filled up then excess of water goes percolates and drowns the ground water and also when the infiltration capacity is satisfied on the top then overland flow starts that is whatever rainfall comes that starts flowing in the form of overland flow. So, that happens. So, and, and from the soil reserve, soil moisture which is there uh, reserved, of course, from there plants to uh, plants uptake moisture for their transpiration process and also evapotranspiration take place. So, that simply means that the soil reserve, soil moisture reserve which is there that basically is important part of uh, water cycle or what we call as hydrological cycle and uh, commonly call as hydrological cycle and that is how soil functions there. Then of course, soil regulates the atmosphere by emitting and absorbing gases like carbon dioxide, methane, water vapor and others and of course, dust. And in today's world when we are talking about climate change so much, then basically soil acts as a sink of these greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, these are very popular greenhouse gases. So, soil acts as a sink for storing these. Then it does provide habitat for animals that live in the soil such as mice and to organisms such as bacteria and fungi that account for most of the living things on the earth. So, just now we saw the picture where we discussed about the soil as a system. So, here we already saw that uh, I mean we, we, we saw that all these possibilities are there. Then soil processes recycled nutrients including carbon so that living things can use them over and over again. So, that is responsible for basically recycling of uh, of the uh, nutrients. And finally, soil serves as a engineering media for construction of foundations, road beds, dams and buildings and that is of interest to engineers that wherever we see any construction whether be it from be it uh, building, be it road, road, be it dam or bridge or whatever their soil will always be there as an engineering media. Then coming to global soil resources uh, which have been given by World Resource Institute 1997. On the earth surface there are 112.66 billion hectares of land out of which 3.96 billion hectares or 31.2 percent is too dry to support any kind of cultivation. So, that means this is not available for cultivation. Another 2 billion hectares or 15.8 percent of the total or uh, surface uh, or total uh, soil that occurs in cold tundra region and that simply means this is also their conditions are too cold for any crop growth. So, this is also not available. That leaves us with 5.92 billion hectares or 46.8 percent of the total 12.66 billion hectares of land that could be cultivated and out of this around 4.92 billion hectares or 38.8 percent of uh, you know, the total land is currently being cultivated. If you look at the world soil condition, then uh, soil condition, then soils are getting degraded in many regions. If you look at India and the color code, then we have areas of serious concern in 
India and that is why soil management is very important. But everything is not gloomy. If you look at the nutrient av availability of soils in India, then you find that there, there is no or slight contract constraints which shows that soils in India are in general of good quality, they are very productive. So, if you can manage them well, we will be able to get a very high level of production. Now, we come to the second factor that is water that is uh, if you look at the global water resources, uh, we already know that almost 97.5 percent of the total water resources are in oceans and that is why we call, call it the world of salt and out of this only 0.3 percent 2.5 percent is fresh water and out of this fresh water only 0.3 percent of water that is available in lakes and river storages that is readily available for use for us that is around 105, uh, uh, 105 lakh, 105 thousand cubic kilometer or 0.0076 percent of total water that is only available for use for us. If you look at the functions of water then obviously sustaining agriculture is the most important use and if you look at the world data almost 80 2 to 84 percent of the total water resources are used in agriculture. If you look at India itself, we use more than 90 percent of water in sustaining agriculture. So, agriculture is the largest user of the uh, water. Then of course, meeting another important function in meeting municipal industrial needs and of course, uh, municipal needs that is drinking water supply is of course uh, of the most vital. So, that is the one of the major functions of the water. And lastly, of course, uh, the water has to also meet the wildlife and recreational needs. So, these are the major functions of water. If you look at the status of food and water availability and if you look at the food production statistics given by food and agriculture organization 2003 and 2013 we find that world production of cereals that is kg per capita was highest in mid 80s and now it is it has declined and almost it has stagnated similarly if you look at the global water scarcity if you look at 2000 data India was blue that means the water availability was greater than 2000 cubic meter per person per year. But come 2050 this color will change and availability will be between 1000 and 2000 cubic meter per person per year. That means we will reach from uh, water rich to water stress condition. We in India need food and water to sustain around 1390 million of population by 2025. But problem is that per capita land and water availability is diminishing or decreasing. So, per capita land in hectare which was 0.5 hectares in 1983 has gone to 0.3 by 2008. Similarly, per capita water in cubic meter which was around 5000 in 1955 now it has come down to almost 1700. So, already we are water stressed. Now, coming to soil erosion, what is soil erosion? Obviously, soil erosion is may be defined as detachment and transportation of soil particles from one place to another due to action of rain, wind and water in motion. And this rain flowing water and wind basically they act as agents of erosion. So, detachment and transportation of soil particles from one place to another due to action of rain, wind and water in motion that is soil erosion and rain flowing water and wind are agents of erosion. If you look at the effects of erosion in India around 45 percent of the total geographical area that is 147 million hectares out of 328 million hectares is affected by water and wind erosion. And if you look at the statistics provided by National Bureau of Soil Science and Land Use Planning and BSS and LUP, then we find that almost 94 he he million hectares of land is affected by water erosion and around 9.5 he million hectares of land is affected by wind erosion. So, this probably should tell you 
why we should study this course because water and wind erosion is very important to manage our soil resources and water water resources together and if we can do that then we will be able to we will solve the water and food security problem and if you look at the effects of soil erosion if you look at the special distribution of degraded and waste lands in india this is the data provided by indian council of agriculture research in 2010 and if you see the colors here most of the colors lie in the first column probably you can't see but this is basically the reads exclusively water erosion problem so that means these are the areas where water erosion is an issue wherein if you look at the rajasthan it is basically exclusively wind erosion so if you can see the entire country is in it has is facing some kind of degradation uh, due to soil erosion and that is why we must study this course and manage our soil resources properly and if you look at the water erosion vulnerability this is the data provided by us department of agriculture natural resources conservation service and if you look here uh, uh, and if you look at in india the colors if you see that you see lot of shades of uh, uh, orange and red so that simply means that high and very high so most of the area in india is very high to very high in the high and to very high cap, um, category of water erosion vulnerability so i think with uh, with uh, this background you will be probably able to understand the importance of uh, soil and water conservation soil and water soil erosion and soil and water conservation and that is what precisely we will cover during the course of this study. Thank you very much.